The institute is a learning master institute of technology. It's an ICT monotechnic that is duly accredited to offer trainings and certifications in the area of technology and vocational studies, ranging from a number of courses from computer software engineering, computer hardware engineering, and networking and system security. This institution was established in 2018 with the aim of bridging the gap between theoretical knowledge and technical skills by way of impacting technical skills in the teaming population of the youth. As to why the institute was established in Eriosho, this is owing to the vision of the founder of the founders of the institute by way of bringing down development to the rural community. It is apparent that institutes like these are found in major cities like the capital cities across the world. But now here being a rural community by way of trying to bridge the gap, bridge the divide. That is why this institution was brought to Eriosho. Yes, the institution started from an ICT resource hub, which was initially accredited to serve as a CBT center for jump activities. Thereafter, it progressed to become an NYSC accredited SAE trainer. Thereafter, it grew to become partner with educational institutions to offer professional trainings. Then moving forward, the institution went further to become accredited by the National Board for Technical Education as an IEI institution in about a year ago. Basically, the courses we offer in the institutions are in three broad categories. The first of them is the one that leads to the National Innovation Diploma which is computer software engineering, computer hardware engineering, and networking and system security. At the end of this course, the students are awarded a national innovation diploma, which is equivalent to the ordinary national diploma that you get from conventional polytechnics. That is the first category. The second category is the professional diploma. This is for working class professionals that needs more skills in varying aspects of information technology, such as data analytics, computer programming, networking, cybersecurity, and all of that. The third aspect are short courses. These are short duration courses that spans between two weeks, three weeks, one month, that covers a wide range of trainings on ICT, entrepreneurship, and um, basic, basic soft skills. Well, for the NID, the qualified candidates are candidates that have sat for the unified tertiary examinations and have scored the minimum benchmark score as approved by JAMP for monotechnics. But for the professional diploma, the basic requirement is that the candidate must have completed an, a tertiary education, either OND, HND, or degree as the case may be. But for short courses, there is no strict requirement. Once the candidate is able to decipher or comprehend the training or the course that he or she has been enrolled for. In this category, we take even kids that are as little as 10 years old till, and there is no maximum age limit for that. We do. We have both on-campus and off-campus courses. Most of our professional diploma students, are, they are working class, they are not here. So from wherever they are, they can take courses in the institution. We have a whole number of them that are, in fact, some of them are even out of the country at the moment. Yeah, the NID certificate, even from the name, is of great value. 
what brought about this particular course or this range of certifications is the need to imbibe technical education in students. As such, it is, what is apparent is that at the end of this NID, the graduates are, are guaranteed of a good, certain, a confident or a considerable level of technical expertise that will afford them opportunity either to progress further or to be an entrepreneur, as the case may be, or to get good jobs in Fortune companies. So that makes it of great value. Well, for now, what is on ground now, from the Federal Ministry of Education, there, we have not seen a willingness to bring an equivalent of higher national diploma for NID. As such, what we are doing currently is that we have made effort to partner with institutions such that immediately our students, as our students are passing out of the NID, they transit further into either HND or BTEC or BSc as the case may be. But moving forward in the future, this institution is planning to become a university of technology within the shortest period of time. Oh, well, it's, it's, I really would not like to mention actually but the reality is that about almost all the universities in southwestern Nigeria, we have had communications with them, and some of them have granted, made courtesy visit to check what we have on ground and to review some of what we offer to be sure that it is in line with what they are currently doing in their various institutions. And in all sincerity, a good number of them are highly impressed by what they have found us doing. And they have given us a number of commendations and recommendations. Well, as an institute of technology, apparently we are, we are laying a good foundation. And by good foundation is that we have tried as much as possible to ensure that everything we do in the institute is in line with the latest trend in technology. For example, it is our culture in the institution that about everything we do is digital. What do I mean by digital? We don't do handouts, sell handouts to students. All our students are expected to have a smart device, either a smartphone or a computer that they can use a personal computer. In the minimum, we have a whole number of systems that are available to them to use in the library, in the laboratories, and all of that. As such, all learning materials, study materials, exams, quiz assessments are made available over the intranet and the internet as the case may be. So as such, every student has access to a variety of learning materials. Yeah, the first of what we try to do is good mentorship. Because if students are well guided and are well mentored, there is a very, very, very slim possibility of them being misguided and being derailed. But be that as it may, we have played so many monitoring techniques. We collect analytics from our systems. We have learning management systems that gives us detailed insights about what every student is doing. Every activity the student is doing, we have a form of reports, a form of analytics that tells us that this student is focusing more on this aspect of IT. This student is, is then we also do what is called sandboxing. Sandboxing is that you open students to do varieties of these things in a controlled environment that can be monitored. They might not know that they are monitored, but the reality is that in sandbox environment, the students, you can actually get a detailed information of what the students are doing, their activities, and all of that. Yeah, in that aspect, a, a number of efforts have been ongoing in the past. 
one of the things we have been doing is that we have been speaking with organizations that offers trainings, that offers internships, and all of that. And at the moment, we have a couple of them that even while the students are still in school, they're already engaging in internships, remote internships. Then when it's time for their COS, they go to these organizations to complete the COS and the industrial training. As such, some of them, even after the COS, they still continue working with these organizations and the recommendations have been very amazing indeed. Yes, learn on schedule, by that we mean that all our training programs are self-paced and they are personalized learning. By personalized learning, we mean that we take why teaching or why the student is learning. We take into cognizance the IQ of the student, how fast the student can learn, and the schedule of the student. As such, students are not really tied into a strict schedule. So what we do is, especially for the professional diploma and the short courses, upon application, you give us a brief overview of what your schedule is all about, and we try to tailor the course delivery and all of that to your schedule, such that the student is expected to have a seamless study session at his or her own schedule. Partnership and investment plans. Well, for now, as we have said earlier, we have made efforts to partner with organizations for internships. And also, for each of these internships, we get reports back and we reward students accordingly. For every innovative project that a student comes up with, as an institution, we make efforts to reward the students and to promote that idea such that it is expected that this will motivate the students and also the upcoming ones to, to do better. Yeah, one of the things that we have been able to do here uniquely is that this institution has partnered with renowned educational institutions and organizations around the world. For example, if a student is in the Department of Networking and System Security as a case study, or a student wants to study cyber security, we ensure that the study material, the lab work, the assessments are directly from about the world best vendor for this particular course. A student that wants to learn Python programming as a case study we have the study material, the assessment, the exams, and all of that delivered by Python Institute. A student that is a networking student, we have all the training materials delivered by Cisco Networking Academy. This ensures that we have the highest quality of education and learning content to deliver the students. One other thing this does for the students is that it makes them, there's a kind of a peer-to-peer -peer learning. It brings them together with other students all around the world. And with this, they see that the same thing they are doing here in Eriosho is what they are doing in every part of the world. They see students from the US, from Australia, from Brazil, doing, engaging in the same, they are in the same classroom, digital classroom, learning the same content, attempting the same exam, doing the same lab work, the same hackathons, competitions, and all of that. So this is what we have been doing so uniquely to ensure that we, we, we meet up with the global standard of education. Well, the, the basic challenge that is typical of this environment is um, funding. Majority of the students in the environment are less privileged. As such, one of the things that the founder of the institute has been able to do is to offer scholarship for a good number of students. But despite this, you still find a number of willing students that could not afford the education or afford the basic requirements, like even a personal computer, some of these students cannot afford them. 
as such, despite that the institutions have made hundreds of computers available to students, but this is still a challenge because it might not continue like this as the institution is growing bigger and bigger. So another thing is um, a broadband connectivity. As we said, we run an institute of technology, a digital institution. So this is not a peculiar challenge to the institution, but a kind of Nigerian factor to say, broadband access to contents. So those are just the basic challenges that, uh, that comes to mind now. Yeah, the, student, the institute has hostels, hostel facilities for males and for females. So even students that are not NID students that come for short courses, once you apply duly on our portal, you make us aware that you are coming between so, -so, -so time and so, so time. So we make provision for accommodations for students. So we have hostel facilities that are well equipped. Separate hostel for the female and a separate one for the males. Yeah, the institute, as an institute of technology, we offer trainings on computer-based assessments. We offer computer-based assessments. We have the facility. So any school or any organization that wants to do either a recruitment examination or a kind of exam, we, we partner with such institutions to help them to coordinate these activities. Then also, the institute is a Pearson View accredited test center where we offer examinations for professional examinations for a number of vendors, including Microsoft, Cisco, Oracle, the Institute of Chartered Accountants, and a host of others. Well, so far, as far as we have gone, we have not gotten grants. Although efforts are all going, some of our students' projects and researches have been presented for such. Yeah, the, from the main goals of the institution is that we we aim to turn out graduates that are self-reliant and that are entrepreneurs that are able to innovate and um, contribute positively to the tech space across the world.